What's going on guys, JP back at you once again, bringing you guys day number 20 in my 10th annual 31 Days of Horror, a series in which we watch and review 31 horror films in 31 days all during the month of October, leading right up to Halloween. And continuing along with the 31 Days of Horror, by the way, this one is going to be up a little bit later, but for good reason, I finally went to go see Halloween Kills, Halloween Kills uh, 2021, which uh, I've been not able to see yet so I finally went and seen that ended up getting home really late had to stop at my sisters and stuff so today's video going up a little bit late but I've always considered as long as I upload it at some point in the night it still counts so <laughs> although it's like a technicality it's still you know not midnight on the east coast on the west coast so it's a technicality but I'm still counting it as a streak I did not miss a day yet so uh, anyway, today we are wrapping up the Scream Factories here on day 20, and it's a little sad because I have so many more Scream Factories that I wanted to watch. It was actually hard only picking five, and I ended up just picking like five that I felt like watching, and that's what I did. So the final film that I picked was one that I haven't seen in years, and that is Someone's Watching Me from the year 1978. This was a John Carpenter film and a TV movie. This came out the same year as Halloween. Now, I don't know if it came out before Halloween or after. I assume it may have came out like right after on TV, which is super cool that he did a TV film uh, in 1978. Uh, you know, that, that's that's really neat. That I think that it's often forgotten piece of John Carpenter's filmography because when it came out um, and also you know not many people have seen it so this film right here used to be on DVD is the first time that I've seen it there was a box set that I mentioned in my hand review in the hand review and it had it was called the Twisted Terror Collection and it was from Warner Brothers and it basically had like, I think, six films in it. It was Someone's Watching Me, Deadly Friend, which was a Wes Craven film, uh, From Beyond the Grave, which was a Amicus Anthology film, Dr. Giggles, which was like so out of place. It's, you know, a cheesy slasher film from the 90s. Uh, and then either 90s or early 2000s, I can't remember. Uh, and then it had The Hand in it. And there was one other title, I believe. Um, Eyes of a Stranger, I believe, was the other title. Uh, which is a pretty cool movie as well. But I first seen that, this movie, in that box set. And I've always loved that box set, but most of those films, if not all of them, and I think I think all of them now have Blu-ray releases, and most of them are by Scream Factory. They just put out Deadly Friend. I think it was just released like today or the other day or something. So um, I think all of them now are released. Um, From Beyond the Grave came out through Warner Archive. Not sure who Dr. Giggles came out through. But anyway... Someone's Watching Me, very uh, simple movie. It basically follows a woman who moves into a new high-rise apartment building after getting a job at a TV station. Uh, she befriends a uh, girl there who is played by Adrienne Barbeau, uh, so it was cool seeing her. And basically this girl starts receiving phone calls uh, that are kind of threatening, and she starts receiving packages in the mail. She gets a telescope, a bikini... Um, I think there was something else that she receives, but she's getting all these threatening and harassing phone calls. She, she's getting harassed, and she believes it's someone from the high-rise across the way that she can see outside of her window. Eventually, she suspects it's uh, a person, and they arrest the person, but it turned out it wasn't him, and she still receives more uh, types of things, and she eventually decides to break in to the other apartment because she thinks she knows who's doing it. And I'll kind of leave the plot off there. I kind of went into it a little deeper than I normally do. Um, but it seems like that the killer is trying to frame her for the murder of her friend, Adrian Barbeau's character, as well as uh, basically kill her and make it look like a suicide. It's a, a pretty simple little thriller, but it is really entertaining. Um, it reminds me of like Rear Window. I've seen a bunch of those like rear window type movies and I've always really liked them. Something about like the voyeuristic like spying and uh, you know apartment horror and apartment films are great in general. Like I've always loved apartments as a setting. 
uh, and this one's really cool because you know it's in it's in the city it's like this high rise and you can see other apartments across um, you know the way I've always wanted to live in one of those like I never will probably but when I was a kid I used to think about like moving to like some city or something and and living in one of those and and I just thought it would be really cool but yeah it's a it's a very simple movie it is kind of thrilling uh, there's not really like a high body count or anything like that. It's it's more of a thriller than anything, but it, it's solid. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7 out of 10. I think it's definitely worth watching. And there's some cool Carpenter stuff in there. You can tell he's sort of getting his legs under him and things like that. So with that said, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow with either Severin or Vinegar Syndrome. So we'll see you guys then. Peace out.